Hello, Internet. It is Sunday. Welcome and uh, welcome to church. And uh, <laughs> and uh, today we're going to uh, apologies if that offends anyone. Today we're going to uh, look over uh, the team that I have been using lately. Um, the uh, Sylveon Rayquaza Groudon team. Um, yesterday on Saturday, I did the sort of refresher video to remind you. But I have using uh, have been using this on Showdown. Um, actually, originally used it on Showdown back at the beginning of May. And uh, I used it on Battlespot uh, a few weeks ago as well. So, uh, you know, you probably know the team quite well. Probably seen a few of my uh, uh, videos using it. Hopefully you have anyway. Um, and in this video, we're just going to have a bit of a overlook. You know, a look at the, the spreads and um, you know, a few of my thoughts on that, I suppose. Um, in May, the beginning of May, uh, when I put out those first Shodan videos with um, this team, um, or I think it might have been... Um, the original version of the team that I used on Showdown back then. I can't exactly remember, but there was a Cresselia and there was a Talonflame. And uh, I had been watching someone from, I think, from South Korea. I'm not sure uh, who it was. I'm not sure if I learned exactly who it was. Um, but they were using the team of Sylveon, Rayquaza, Groudon, Smurgle. So the four that we've got in the middle there, uh, instead of the Crobat, they had Talonflame. And instead of the Slowbro, uh, they had Cresselia. Now, I swapped the Talonflame to the Crobat just because um, I felt it was a little bit weak maybe to um, sort of Smurgle Xerneas leads or Kangaskhan Xerneas um, I thought Crobat helped out a little bit more against Big Six uh, Talonflame is quite nice because obviously it hits um, you know Xerneas quite nicely with Brave Bird uh, but I just felt Crobat was a little bit better against Big Six especially because it can have the Lumberry and with the Inner Focus as well uh, which is a, a really big thing. Like, I, I do like Inner Focus uh, as an ability. So, uh, you know, Crobat, Inner Focus, you can sit in front of a Kangaskhan and um, they're not going to, well, they shouldn't <laughs> use Fake Out on you. Um, we'll come on to, you know, why I changed the Slow Bro in a little bit when we have a look at that. But, um, you know, Super Fang, Torn, Tailwind, Quick Guard, pretty standard moves, I suppose. I could have Haze on here. Uh, I don't know where where I would put it though, because all four of those moves I think are very useful. Maybe over Quick Guard. I don't think Quick Guard is used that often. Um, so maybe over Quick Guard. But you know, especially because, uh, like I said, um, you know, in a few of the videos using this team, Xerneas is a bit of an issue for this team, especially if it's like a surprise late game, like late game sort of Xerneas. So maybe having Haze could be quite nice. But there is the Taunt on there as well, so. You know, there is that. I suppose um, Haze would be nice if they had some sort of redirection to you know, redirect the taunt, or if it came in after Azunius had already geomanted or something. But, uh, you know, Haze is a potential on there, but uh, I quite like how this was. I'm not sure about standard Crobat EV spreads or whatever, but this is the spread that I used. Um, you know, maximum speed, you know, don't want to, you know, get knocked out first by, I don't know, Mega Gengar or a Crobat or something, or a um, Mewtwo, that's what I'm trying to say. Um, or, um, and the rest of it is basically just physically defensive. So, the 20 HP in defense, in um, HP, I think, um, lets it live a plus two Moonblast, something like that. Um, but basically it's all in defense, uh, or almost all in defense, just so that I can survive, um, you know, big Kangaskhan hits. I think, you know, Jolly Return, maybe a, a Jolly Double Edge, I think it can survive. Um, but um, I find that you know Kangaskhan's attacks are probably the the most common attacks that go on to Crobat. So being physically defensive is quite nice. Uh, some people might prefer specially defensive Crobat or whatever. I don't know, but I quite like this spread. I think it worked out for us. Uh, next, we start to get into um, you know um, some of the more interesting Pokemon on the team. Sylveon is not a Pokemon that um, has seen much usage in um, this VGC 16 format. Um, which is interesting considering um, it was huge last year and in VGC... No, it wasn't in, it wasn't in VGC 14, was it? Because the pixelate ability didn't exist. Uh, Steve Edgson um, used Sylveon, I'm pretty sure, with Cute Charm and uh, all the rest of it. Uh, Moonblast. But, um, yeah, last year when it got the pixelate ability, it was everywhere. And people have just sort of forgotten about it now because Xerneas exists. And Xerneas is just the big, meaty, chunky sort of improvement to Sylveon, I suppose. Um, but Sylveon is still, I think, a very good Pokemon. It's very bulky. Um, you can see this Sylveon has got a lot of um, you know, EVs into bulk. It can survive a lot of attacks. Um, I think, um, if I'm remembering, because um, I did make these spreads quite a while ago, I think this Sylveon can survive 
um, a max attack requires a dragon ascent without a life orb, um, and I think it can survive. Um, can it survive a plus two moon blast? It's something like that. Um, it's something like that. Um, but I just I seem to remember this spread was pretty nifty, and I quite liked it. Um, the special attack investment um, isn't so necessary because um, we have got the pixelate ability, we have got the pixie plate on here as well, and um, you know we are I think quite close to the bump as well. Yeah, so there's the bump. You know you like you like my bumps if you watched that video a while ago. We've just got the bump there and just two more on top of that as well. So um, you know it's a nice efficient spread. Um, I did consider maybe a chesto berry over the pixie plate. Uh, just because Smurgle could potentially be a little bit of an issue of the team, and um, with um, a Chesterberry, I'd just be able to lead Sylveon, and if I didn't get knocked out, uh, go for like a Hyper Voice, you know, they don't void, put you to sleep, wake up, Hyper Voice, quick attack, and it's gone. So, um, that could be quite nice, but the, the Pixie Plate, I think, was quite nice too, just because uh, the team isn't really geared too much towards Trick Room, this team. So, um, you know, I could abuse their Trick Room as well. So if they do Trick Room, you know, get the Trick Room, but they've got a Kyogre sitting there, or, or maybe even a Groudon, you know, which doesn't have the, the best special offense, I can sit there and fire off some really powerful Hyper Voices and start chipping away at them. So I did quite like that. So Hyper Voice is an obvious move on there. Um, helping Hand, um, the original team had two Helping Hands. It had Helping Hand on Sylveon and it had Helping Hand on Cresselia as well because it was sort of ba based around being really offensive, like being fast with this Rayquaza and, you know, Helping Hand Extreme Speed, Helping Hand Dragon Ascent, Helping Hand Draco Meteor, that sort of stuff. So Helping Hand was really important and uh, it did work quite nicely. Uh, in fact, I don't remember using Helping Hand too often, but um, I can definitely, definitely remember times when it did come into uh, um, you know into fruition where I could go for a, a safe helping hand dragon ascent onto the Kyogre or something like that um, apparently um, showdown has uh, disconnected so um, thankfully yeah we'll uh, we'll get back into this <laughs> don't know what happened there um, okay so um, so there's that and quick attack is the other move that is uh, maybe a little bit not you know not so so common but um, you know we are using a minus speed uh, nature, so we've got, you know, a, a, I hesitate to say respectable attack stat of 86. <laughs> I mean, it is pixie plate boosted, it is pixelate boosted. Quick attack can actually do um, a bit of damage. You know, it can do like a 15% or something to Kangaskhan, um, you know, to maybe knock it out. It can do, you know, a decent chunk actually to things like Salamence and opposing Rayquaza as well. It can break focus sashes. Um, it can do actually a lot of work. I do like priority attacks and quick attack here I thought was pretty nice. Um, the only sort of downside I guess to this Sylveon with it being minimum speed, I mean it's nice for taking advantage of trick rooms but as we saw in yesterday's video um, you know things of a similar base speed or even things like mobile that aren't uh, minimum speed will just outspeed it and be able to hit it first which isn't quite nice. Uh, isn't isn't quite good, but um, you know that's the spread. I quite like the spread. Uh, feel free to use it if you want to. Uh, Rayquaza is next, and um, again, this is like my own little sort of spread that we've got going on. Um, it is life orb for maximum destruction, I guess. Um, Smogor's got the focus sash as well, but life orb like this this team is sort of geared around this Rayquaza Groudon core, I guess, of being fast, hitting them first, knocking them out. Um, so we've got a mixed one here. This is naive, so um, I think there's a chance, there's like a small chance we can take a, a Kyogre Ice Beam in the Strong Winds. Um, but uh, I did want, like I didn't want to go hasty because I wanted like a better chance to survive uh, Kangaskhan's hits. Because I think Kangaskhan is maybe a little bit more of an issue than Kyogre is for this team. Considering Rayquaza will hit it first and we have got Groudon on, on here too. Um, and Sylveon is actually okay against Kyogre as well. So, we are mixed. We've got Draco Meteor, which is a massive, powerful special attack, obviously, you know. Um, and I've got 28 EVs here into special attack, which, um, if I can remember rightly, ensures the um, one-hit KO onto just 4 HP Groudon. So, um... You know, if the Groudon hasn't got any bulk, if it's just like this one, if it, well, actually, this one's got a little tiny bit of bulk, but um, if it's like, you know, any other sort of timid or jolly Groudon that is just 252, 252, 
then um, I can bank on this Draco Meteor uh, one-shotting it 90% uh, of the time, I guess. There is the accuracy issue in there as well. Um, Dragon Ascent, obviously it needs Dragon Ascent um, you know, to be Mega Rayquaza, um, but you know, even, even so, it's a fantastic attack. Um, hits Kyogre very, very hard. It hits anything very hard. Um, especially with the life orb, especially with the helping hand as well. And extreme speed is um, essential as well. With a life orb, again, it does a lot of damage. Um, like I was saying, Xerneas can maybe be a little bit of an issue for this team, but if you can, um, you know, maybe erupt on it first or get a couple of earth powers or, um, you know, a, a hyper voice or two super fangs or something like that and put it into extreme speed range or, um, you know, just one, one. Super Fang, and then it'll be in like helping hand extreme speed range. Um, there are sort of ways to deal with it. Extreme speed against another priority attack can help with things like Smurgle as well. Uh, maybe if you find yourself in Trick Room, it's a fantastic move, obviously. Um, and uh, you know, that's the spread. Max speed, like I said, 28 into special attack for the Draco Meteor there. Um, four into HP and defense, um, you know, for you know, Jamie Boyd's. Um, you know, cloister calculation with the icy icicle spear, <laughs> um, and the rest of it into uh, attack. Obviously, um, you know we're not far off max attack, so um, I don't think the sort of lack of a few attack um, stat points matters too much here. Although you might remember, um, like a couple of weeks ago, there was that game where um, I was sure that a Dragon Ascent would uh, knock out their Kangaskhan after the spiky shield damage and it just survived on probably like 1 or 2 HP maybe, maybe that came into effect there so, you know, um, ups and downs, swings and roundabouts um, Groudon though is um, the other restricted Pokemon um, this is uh, basically like, you know, you probably saw my gravity team report this is just the same spread um, of the Groudon on there, but the other way around. This is the timid Groudon. So max speed, um, 4 HP, 20 special offense, just to pretty much almost ensure Hyper Voice from Salamence is a 2 hit KO, and the rest in special attack as well. Um, the Well, actually, um, you know, that doesn't do anything there, but it can't go anywhere else. You know, 4 um, EVs does nothing anywhere else. So, um, you know, yeah, it does nothing. So, uh, you know, just put it in there just to. You know, make it look. I don't know, for no reason. Um, because we've got the 30 for Hidden Power Ice. That's what I'm trying to say. So, <laughs> Hidden Power, <laughs> Hidden Power Ice is the um, sort of trick up the sleeve, I suppose, with this Groudon. And uh, I've noticed Hidden Power Ice is getting maybe a little bit more common. Um, as is, you know, on Special Groudon. I mean, Special Groudon is having a little bit of a resurgence now in general, isn't it? But um, you know, Thunderbolt, maybe Thunder on Groudon can be used as well. Um, Normally, like at the beginning of the season when I used special Groudon like this, I did have Rock Tomb in that slot um, just to hit Talonflame and for speed control as well. I do I do always like Rock Tomb. Uh, whenever an opponent uses Rock Tomb on me, I think, oh, damn, you know, I'm in a really bad position now, but, you know, that's my little trick that's <laughs> that I've had used against me. Um, funny, because I used, you know, Rock Tomb to Rakion last year as well. You know, you might remember that. Um, but, yeah, you know, a pretty straightforward Groudon. Um, just touch on the whole combination of Rayquaza Groudon as well. It is a very strange combination because normally you see, you know, Rayquaza and Kyogre together to ensure the water attack on opposing Groudon. So um, with these two, um, you do have to always bear that in mind that, you know, if you've got your Rayquaza out that hasn't Mega Evolved yet, um, you can't just bring in your Groudon and think it's going to be safe from water attack. So you, you do have to bear that in mind. But, you know, if you're leading with with uh, Rayquaza, um, you just want to Mega Evolve with it straight away. There's not really any point in keeping Rayquaza with Airlock on this team. There's no other Mega Evolutions, um, and you're just going to be potentially risking your, your Groudon in the future too. So um, I always Mega Evolve the... Uh, or almost always Mega Evolve the, uh, the Rayquaza straight away with this team. But it's just something you've got to uh, to watch out for, I suppose. Um, Smurgle, again, is pretty straightforward. Um, it's max speed. Uh, it's timid for you know foul play and whatever. Uh, Focus Sash, Moody. Interesting to use Moody. Um, this is the first team that actually I used Moody Smurgle with, and um, it hasn't really hindered us too much, and it has helped us out quite a few times. So Moody, as much as I absolutely hate it, as much as I wish it wasn't in the format. Um, this is a game where you want to try and win, obviously, and it is within the rules. You can use it. I think Moody, unless you're going for a slow Smurgle, I think Moody is the best ability, and um, there you go. 
you know, un uh, how unfortunate that is um, that we're allowed to use such an ability, but, you know, moody is moody. Um, this Smurgle, like, it's a, a standard ish Smurgle. I mean, like, most Smurgle have got Dark Void and Follow Me and some sort of way of protecting themselves, like Spiky Shield or maybe King Shield now. Um, Wide Guard, I do quite like as well. Um, you know, it can help with Dazzling Gleam, it can help against um, other primal Pokemon with their, um, you know, big spread attacks. Um, there are mind games as well that you can play with, like Follow Me and Wide Guard too, so I do like both of these. Um, the Smurgle could have Crafty Shield as well, that is another potential, just to help a little bit more with other Smurgle. Um, it could maybe have Fake Out as well. Uh, Fake Out Smurgle is, I think, maybe coming around a little bit more again. And um, it's it's okay. I'm not the biggest fan of Fake Out Smurgle, but there is nothing else on this team that has got Fake Out. So maybe on this team it could um, it could have Fake Out. So the EV spread. I mean, it's maximum speed. Um, the rest of it, I don't know. I suppose I suppose I could put uh, the two five two into um, HP instead of defense, and um, it would have a better chance of surviving a Hyper Voice from a Salamence, but we have got the Focus Sash, um, and I, I can't remember exactly why I put the, uh, you know, all of it into defense, maybe to survive like a Kangaskhan power-up punch, I think that must have been it, um, but either way, um, I don't think the bulk matters too much there, I suppose Moody Boosts would help, um, you know, mm, I don't know. It's, it's up to you where you put your, your Smurgle's defense EVs, really, but I just put them... I'm, I'm pretty sure it is to survive a power punch, just so that Kangaskhan can't just power punch onto your Smurgle, knock it out, and sit there at plus two or freely, so uh, I'm pretty sure that's what it's for. But we'll move on to Slowbro, because Slowbro is um, not seen at all. You know, I think... Uh, yeah, I am, I'm the only person that I've seen this format using Slowbro. You know, I'm pretty sure, um, like, I think uh, Roshan used Slow King last year with the Gastrodon and all that lot. Um, but Slowbro is not really seen this year at all. Um, it is a Slowbro and a Slow King. Um, there aren't many reasons why. Um, like, the stats are just, just the same, but sort of the other way around sort of thing. Um, I suppose being a Slowbro, it could maybe make them think it's a Mega Slowbro. I don't know. Um, there's not really any reason why it's a Slowbro over a Slow King, I suppose. Um, but um, it's interesting. Like, the original team, like I was saying, had a Cresselia instead of the Slowbro. Um, this Slowbro um, helps with Double Primal Trick Room uh, matchups as well, so it can Trick Room. Um, but the thing that Slowbro can do that Cresselia can't do, or there's two things actually, is this one has got After You. Now, this Slowbro you can see, it's base speed 30, it's minimum speed, it's got a you know, stat of, of 31 speed. That means it's slower than Bronzong. Bronzong, I think its base speed is 33 or something like that. So, uh, you know, although it's slow, it's not slower than Slowbro. So, you know, <laughs> haha. Um, so Slowbro in Trick Room, you know, if you've got your Groudon and Slowbro out, or Rayquaza and Slowbro out, or whatever, and they've got, um, you know, Bronzong and Kyogre, or Bronzong and their own Groudon, or something like that, Slowbro will be the fastest Pokemon in Trick Room. You can go for an After You, you know, after your eruption, after you drag an ascent, um, you know, whatever, and surprise them. You know, I suppose now putting this out, and you know, I have used this a little bit on um, the internet on YouTube. I suppose it's not so much of a surprise now, but um, you know, it's good fun. Um, after you, Slowbro, it's pretty good. And the other thing that Slowbro can do that Cresselia can't do is it can abuse the airlock. It can abuse the uh, strong winds a little bit more too. Uh, because, you know, if they have got their own Groudon, um, Slowbro can just scold it. You know, if you're in the strong winds or um, strong winds or whatever, um, scold it, knock it out. Um, you know, the attack, the special attack stat here is only 120, but um, I am fairly certain that scold, even bulky Groudon, I'm pretty sure it will just knock it out as well. Maybe the bulkiest of Groudons could survive. But, um, you know, it, it is like a, a single target attack Scald, isn't it? So it is nice. Scald can burn things too. So if you're in a bit of a, a sort of store war with another Cresselia or something, just fire off some Scalds. You'll eventually burn it, and then you should win that too. Ice Beam is there to help with, um, you know, against other Rayquaza and Salamence um, key as well, to help against other Salamence. That's quite big. Um... You know, it's a standard move, really, Ice Beam 2. Protect might be nice on here. Skill Swap might be nice on here, too. Um, but I just felt like these are maybe the best four moves for it. 
Um, Oblivious is nice because it means that they can't taunt you, so that's another thing that Slowbro can do that Cresselia can't. Um, you know, Cresselia, if it doesn't want to be taunted, it has to hold a mental herb. Um, Oblivious means you can't be taunted. You can still be encored, unfortunately, so don't fall into the trap of thinking that you're immune to all sort of mind things like that. Um, and I've got a Citrus Berry on here as well, just to make sure that Slowbro is extra, extra bulky. Um, the spread here means that uh, Slowbro from a max attack, like 252 plus Groudon Precipice Blades, will do just over half to Slowbro um, to ensure that the Citrus Berry activates and then you will be able to survive another, um, another Precipice Blades. So, you know, with the Citrus Berry, you've effectively got 125 percent HP and two Precipice Blades will not do more than 125 um, percent. So Citrus Berry works out quite nicely. The other, I mean, the, the thing that uh, Cresselia can do that Slowbro can't do is Levitate. So you do have to worry a little bit more about um, Precipice Blades with Slowbro. But, you know, on the other side, Slowbro does have the water typing and maybe you can switch uh, better into Kyogre as well. So you can switch into their water spout and not really take much damage because look at this special defense that we've got here. Uh, the EV spread, max HP, uh, which conveniently enough for um, Slowbro is an even number, so Citrus Berry will activate on a uh, on a Super Fang, and the rest of that is, look at that, just into Special Defense, just so that it can switch into um, uh, Kyogre a bit better, but also so that it can take um, Thunderbolts from Thunderous nicely, and Thunders from Kyogre's quite nicely as well. I'm pretty sure when I first started using Slowbro, I did put it mostly into her physical bulk um, to help, you know, better with Kangaskhan and Precipice Blades, but um, I think I found that a combination of, like, Thunderbolt from a Thunderous and, um, you know, another sort of weaker attack would just knock the Slowbro out. So um, I have put that almost entirely into Special Offense to help with... Uh, Thunderbolt and stuff too, because you know, okay, you see you're sitting in front of a Thunderous, it can't taunt you, but it can still Thunderbolt you. <laughs> so um, being able to just sort of eat up special attacks that uh, like that is uh, is really nice too. So um, I did quite like that. Um, you know, it's an interesting team. Interesting team. It's quite a nice team. Um, but there you go. You can use it yourself now. Um, I know, you know, there is, uh, you know, one person on Children that has been using this team quite a lot. Um, but I think they've still been uh, using the uh, the Cresselia instead of the Slipper, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, go go out there, go use it if you want to. It's up to you. You've had the spreads now, so uh, you know you don't have to uh, do the sneaky thing where you look at my spreads when I hover over it on Showdown. Because I know you do that, you naughty people. <laughs> nah, I don't mind. It's uh, it's it's uh, within your right. So yeah, there you go. Crobat, Sylveon. I quite like that Sylveon spread. Um, Rayquaza. Quite a nice spread too, Gradon, Smurgle and Slowbro. So um, I hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Um, if you do go out there and use it uh, on Showdown or whatever, uh, you know, save some replays, put them in the comments. I really do like watching people using teams that I have um, used myself. Uh, you know, I can't say that I built this team exactly because it is based off that South Korean, uh, South Korean team, but, you know, a third of the team... I suppose is is mine really. I did change the crowbat. I've changed the crowbat. So this is my adaptation of the team. So yeah, hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Hope you've liked it. Um, please like and share if you um, if you have liked it and would wish to share it. Um, so thanks and goodbye for now. We'll see you uh, tomorrow for um, you know some more videos. I'm sure. <laughs> Bye.